cultures, one of the pillars of world building, and yet very few people talk about it. How are they created? How are they developed? Because there's far more to culture than clothes or architecture. Because it's hard, it requires much more attention to details. Because it's unnecessary. At least that's what people say to hand wave this subject. When we live in our cultures, we never truly think about the why of everything. Why my people speak like this? Why my country have such architecture? What made people act that way and what made them have that mindset? Why some cultures develop and others stagnate? That is why I created this guide. This is guide for you to create your own fictional cultures. No matter what is your setting, fantasy, sci-fi, steampunk, there are always crucial elements that influence a culture. And before we'll get through how to actually start to world build a culture, I want to mention those things and elaborate on them because you will need to constantly think about those things whenever you add something or change something in the culture that you want to create. Those are your pillars that you always need to keep in mind before you start. First one, geography. This is the most important factor that determine how the culture will develop. The less technologically advanced your setting is, the more geography will influence the development of your culture. Let me give you an example. Let's say in your setting you have a huge mountain range with a big, enormous, jagged mountains. This place will probably have, you know, a low population since, you know, it's hard to settle in in one place. The terrain is hostile, you have risks of snowy avalanche or a rock slide. There's not much food since the soil and the climate is bad for, you know, farmable crops. There's also not that much animals to hunt. Not enough food means people will not procreate and will not risk having many kids. The cultures here will probably be nomadic or maybe tribalistic with big hostilities between clans since everyone will fight for food and good land as those will be rare commodities here. But then let's say you introduce a giant lake in the middle of this huge mountain range. Now this can be a bedrock, a source of development of the cultures here. Because a lake means water, a lot of water. It means food because of fishing and the ease of watering crops. And the land around lakes is also a bit more flat, which means more space for arable land and building houses. This also influences the power structure of the region. The most powerful tribes or clans will fight for dominance for this specific piece of land because of how valuable it is. The clans around the lake will either fight for each small piece of land or try to unite to conquer the mountain tribes deeper, let's say, inland. Maybe the clans around the lake will invite the smaller clans that live deeper in the mountains for, you know, manpower to help fight the other clans around the lake. Because of how important this lake is now, maybe it will become a religious place. Do you see how a couple of, you may think, insignificant pieces of geography now influence how the people live there? This is how geography changes the way cultures develop. The second one is history and recent events. You may have a specific culture that developed in a certain way due to the geography of the region, but what if there was some massive war that happened recently? What if suddenly some strange invaders from another land came to your land that bear a different culture? What if an outbreak of a deadly disease synced almost perfectly with a date of a religious holiday or an area of religious significance was the birthplace of this disease? How people will react to it? How it will affect them? Maybe people with... I don't know, brown hair will be specifically targeted by this disease for some reason. How the culture will react to that? Will they banish them? Burn them? Will those people now seclude themselves in a different area and develop a new culture that was based on banishment and the feeling of shame? Or maybe the feeling of disappointment? Will this new community now have a grudge to those clans that banish them? Or maybe they will become nomadic and they will wander to a completely different place then their presence there will influence this new place. This sequence of cascading events had now a huge impact on not only this area, but maybe all the areas around. Fun fact, do you know why do we say bless you whenever you sneeze? It's because of the Black Plague in Europe. 
During that time, people thought that it spreads through the air and sneezing might have been a sign of catching it. So people would say to you, bless you, to wish you that you did not caught the plague. Did you see how this events from like a couple hundred years ago still affect us till this day? The third one is neighboring cultures. Because sure, the cultures will specifically develop because of the geography and its history, but what neighboring cultures that developed nearby due to their own circumstances will also influence the further development of a culture. A sudden appearance of a hostile culture that keeps attacking you and raiding you might actually unite your own culture into one nation. Or maybe your culture will be conquered and now mix with the invading culture or be completely gone. Or maybe you decided to surrender, but actually managed to hold on to many of their beliefs and cultural systems. Even if a neighboring culture is not hostile, the simple act of trading will very much influence the development of both. Because trade is not just money and products. To trade, you need to meet another human being. You need to go to their place and offer them your own goods. It's an exchange of ideas. You see new things and your perspective of some things might change. And this can further change your own culture overall when you come back and you actually speak to other people about all those experiences that you have. And the last thing is fantasy. People tend to forget that if they invent some fantastical race or introduce magic to their world, they often don't even think about the greater impact of those things or how they will develop. Let's say you introduce a fantasy race with a very, very long lifespan. So, for example, elves. In your setting, elves live for, let's say, 900 years, right? Do you think this has no impact whatsoever on their culture? A race that lived for that long will have a lot of trouble to make generational changes in their culture. You need to remember that tradition and culture is mostly within us. It's not the architecture, it's not the food, it's not the way you speak. Those things are just manifestation of your culture, but you yourself are carrying it. If you die and don't spread those ideas and tradition of your culture to the younger generation, then the younger generation will either adopt a different culture or will develop its own version of the culture that it lives in. A race that lived for almost a thousand years will have a lot of difficulties to change their own culture. And that is just one of many, many aspects that this will create. Because how do this culture look at old people in their own culture will be vastly different than in our human culture. To start world building your in-universe culture, you need to know where do you start. Do you want to create a very specific culture for your world? If yes, then you need to build a specific environment for that culture to make it reasonable for it to exist. But maybe you started your world building with a map and you don't know what to put in certain places. Then you analyze the environment, the history of a place, maybe a landmark, and then create a culture that would make sense within those confines that you yourself created. Of course, keep in mind all those things that I mentioned previously. The entire process of creating a culture from the confines of your world building is a meticulated process when you think about certain dependencies and keep adding new things, new traditions, but don't limit yourself too much. Remember that if you don't like something which would make sense from the geographical perspective, you can change that by manipulating other points. The geography might be set, but you can create a backstory that changes certain things. Maybe you don't want a nomadic tribe on that step, even though it would make the most sense to do. Okay, well, then you can pull something from history or recent events. Maybe this place was invaded by a republic that is many miles away and they managed to establish a prospering settlement with a provisional government made of locals, then this republic was forced to withdraw for any reasons, but this nomadic tribe was now united with a different type of government thanks to those invaders. Maybe you introduce some type of magic that makes the ground fertile and allows them to rise walls of stone out of the ground by using magic which would make this culture less nomadic and more established in one place. You can do a lot of things with this. There's this great example from the game Pathologic 2, which takes place in this late industrial era town near a grassy steppe. 
Thanks to the advanced technology and the railway system, it is far more connected to the broader world, but because it is still a very remote place, it has some influence of the local indigenous nomadic culture that lives nearby. This indigenous culture venerate cows and bulls, especially bulls, and you can see that even the town is far more advanced technologically and different culturally, it still adopted some cultural elements like those play structures in the playground, or the internal household decoration, which mixes the sophisticated industrial culture with the tribal indigenous culture. But maybe you already have an idea for a culture. Then the same things apply, with the difference that if you start with a culture, then you can craft the geography around it for it to develop properly and logically. If you invent a history for that culture and you need a dramatic battle that took place that shaped the tradition of that culture, you can shape the geography to fit the narrative of the battle. Those points that I presented previously are the key factors, but if you don't like the outcome of one of them, then you can manipulate the other to fit whatever you want to do. Remember, it is your world, you are its god. You can shape things for your liking to fit whatever you want to create narratively. Now for some common mistakes that I keep seeing. Copy-pasting. Do not copy-paste cultures. There is nothing wrong to be inspired by something, to take an already existing culture and put it into your world, but if you do, then do something with it. Change it, develop it, maybe mix it with a couple different cultures so it will feel fresh and fleshed out. Because, sadly, there is plenty of copy-pasted Roman empires, Vikings, Arabs, Samurais, etc. And it becomes really tiring. It is very uninspiring and can feel very lazy. Another one is fantasy tropes or any other genre tropes. Again, tropes just by themselves are not bad. It's just people take what keeps reappearing in their media of choosing and mindlessly put into their worlds. Like dwarves always having a beef with elves, dwarves always loving blacksmithing and elves always venerating trees and nature, necromancy being always hated and creating Inquisition version 5674. There's also one particular mistake that I keep seeing but very few people actually speak about it, which is the culture of portrayal. What I mean is trying to create a fictional culture purely based on aesthetics, on architecture, clothes and weapons. As I said previously, culture is mostly within people. People having a specific set of values, set of traditions, beliefs that leak into the entire society. The entire legal system, hierarchy, political system, religion and traditions. What I often see is people trying to portray all fictional cultures from the perspective of our modern day values. And they portray all cultures that are against our modern day values as inherently evil and that culture is also usually the bad guy of the story who will be defeated at the end by the culture with the modern day values with a slight difference of it being a kingdom because it's fantasy so it needs to be a kingdom obviously. I know that people are afraid of putting stuff that might be controversial from the modern day value perspective but that is your fictional world, you don't need to judge everything morally. Truth be told, if you want your culture to feel very immersive and very fleshed out you need to remember to, you know, invent a lot of details. You need to put a lot of effort and, and, you know, your soul into it. Because people will notice, even if, you know, your book or whatever you're creating will be experienced by quote-unquote normies who don't really look at those things, trust me, they will instinctively feel more immersed. Because that's what I talk about in one of my previous videos in Gothic, I believe, where... I felt very much immersed when I was a kid and you know I was a kid I was a dumb kid I didn't know what it, what makes a good story what makes a good world building when I was like 10 years old right and yet for some reason I felt really immersed in that particular world but not any other fantasy world you know in in video games at that time and I was like why is that and it turns out it's just really, really fleshed out. Nothing is, you know, in your face. No one tells you, you know, this is how it is. Everything is in the background and it's more of a thing that you instinctively catch up. You instinctively know that there is more to it and you can feel very immersed in it. People really appreciate detail even if they don't look for it. 
But this will be all for today. I really recommend you to check out my other guides if you like this one. And even if you go through those guides and you're still struggling with creating your own world, your own stories, you can check the first link down in the description below. However, that is all for today. I wish you a great weekend and we will see each other next time.